Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Newsor Education. So we continue talking about fields, um, fields with uh, potential. That's what we were introducing um, in the last lecture. So we were talking about field as certain area in space, in our three-dimensional space with Cartesian coordinates, and uh, the field intensity force exists at every point in certain area um, and uh, also what was introduced yes the uh, previous lecture was that um, this field um, might have a function called potential which is related to the field force field intensity force as that this field intensity force at any point of the area where the field is defined is actually a vector of um, partial derivatives of this function but they dy and by dz, which also called gradient of function u. Gradient. So basically we have defined that the field is inertial and the function of the force it defined at every point is actually a real field intensity. In case there is some kind of a function called potential, gradient of which is equal to um, the, uh, the force. Now this is a scalar function, which means at every point x, y, z there is only one value. But whenever you are uh, doing the partial derivatives by x, y, and z, you have at three values, and three values constitute the vector, which is vector of force. So we are considering only the fields with uh, intensity force that can be represented as gradient of some scalar function called potential. So that was basically in the last lecture, and I also have proven that if we are having this particular relationship, if the force, intensity force, is defined as a gradient of some potential function, then there are a couple of properties. And um, two very important properties which we were talking about were that if you have two different points and you have one trajectory and another trajectory as uh, object moves along from A to B, then the work, which is, let's say, this is trajectory number one, this is trajectory number two, that the work performed that by this force, defined as a gradient, does not depend on on the past depends only on um, endpoints. So the work which this force performs when object moves from A to B along the trajectory number one is equal to uh, the work performed by the force um, by, uh, by trajectory number two. So the forces are different, obviously. This is a force. At every point it's different but the work will be the same. By the way, why do we actually kind of studying these particular types of fields? Well, because our fields which we are dealing with, gravitational field and electromagnetic field, they are potential, which means the force of the gravity actually can be expressed as gradient of gravitational potential and same thing with electromagnetic field so that's why it's important and that's why I decided specifically uh, pay attention to these particular um, fields now 
I would like actually to prove something else. If I have the property like this, so the work is independent on the path, then it must be the potential field, it must be some kind of a potential function u, gradient of which is equal to uh, the intensity force of the field. So this particular, these particular properties that the field is actually potential field, which means intensity is equal to gradient, and uh, properties of the field like uh, uh, work performed along trajectory depends only on end points of this trajectory. These are very much related. So, if independence of trajectory is given, then it must be a potential field, or if it's a potential field, and that's what I proved the last time, then uh, the work is independent on trajectory. So this is the goal. Now this goal will be achieved in two lectures. Today I will spend some time um, talking about very very simple uh, theorems about work performed by the field um, uh, in, uh, in, in performed by, by intensity uh, force of the field. Now these um, very very simple theorems, which are actually called lemma, lemmas, field work lemmas, that's what will be today. They will help me in the next lecture to prove basically that if there is an independence of the work um, from trajectory and it only depends on the end points, then the field must be potential, which means there must be the function u, um, gradient of which is equal to uh, intensity force. So that's the plan. And again, today we'll only talk about very, very simple properties of the um, of the field, which I'm going to basically prove. Uh, but they are very, very simple. So that's why I call them memos. Okay. Let's wipe out this one, and let's talk about these very, very simple theorems. <coughs> Now, theorem number one. Now, I'm not talking about potential field right now. I'm talking about any field and the force. So it might be potential, might be not. So this particular property is independent, basically, even of any kind of a, what kind of a field you're dealing with. So in a very simple uh, in a very simple way, I can describe it like this. So, whenever you're moving from A to B along certain trajectory, in the uh, area where there is some kind of a force defined, <coughs> any kind of a force, then if you are moving from A to B, the force performs certain work, right? So, you're moving from A to B. Now, if you're, doing, if you're moving along exactly the same trajectory, but in, a di in, in an opposite direction, work, work is also performed by, by the force, but the sign of the work is opposite, and magnitude is the same. So that's all. Very simple. So whenever you're going from A to B, you perform work. Whenever you're moving from B to A, the force also performs the work, but the sign would be different, although the magnitude is the same. Why is that? Well, actually, it's very simple in one-dimensional case. Let's do it one-dimensional case. So let's say this is the graph of the function. And uh, what kind of work performed? Well, um, what is work? Well, if you have certain amount of, um, if you have certain um, trajectory, very, very small one, let's consider it a straight line, and there is a function f, which is defined. And let's say the length of this is dx, is a very, very small infinitesimal increment. So the work defined is defined basically 
infinitesimal piece basically of work. DW is F times DX, right? Now, this is actually the vector, and this is a vector, and this is scalar product. Now, if they are collinear, then it's just multiplication, but if the work is at angle, then you need the cosine of this angle to project this onto this line, and that's why would be the formula would be like that. Okay, now, if you're moving from here to here, your dx will be positive. If you're moving from here to here, from b to a, your increment would be negative, right? If this is the x-axis, then this will be the positive direction, this will be negative direction. The force is the same, but the sign of differential would be different, because what is differential? It's x. <coughs> Um, x plus dx minus x, right? But if you're moving this way, your x would be here, and x plus dx would be here, right? You're moving this. So that's why dx must be negative in this case. So if this is the same, and this is negative relative to the movement from A to B, the sign would be changed. Now, in three-dimensional case, it's exactly the same thing. You just have to consider each particular coordinate separately. So, again, what is infinitesimal um, infinitesimal amount of work? Well, that's basically a scalar, scalar product of the force and uh, the vector, which basically, well, R is x, y, z, and g r is dx dy dz. So now in three-dimensional case it becomes a vector. So again you have to um, do a scalar uh, multiplication of two vectors, the force and the increment of the direction where you are moving. But again if you are moving from A to B the dx and dy and dz have certain sign but if you're moving from B to A, each one of them would be an opposite. So whenever you will do this as a vector, X component of X, Y, Z, Y component of vector X, Y, Z, and Z component of vector X, Y, Z, scalar product on dx, dy, and dz, that would be equal to what? fx times dx plus fy times dy plus fz times dz. And whenever you're moving in opposite direction, these would be different sign, and f would be, component would be the same. So that's why basically it's a very simple kind of I, I have a very long explanation of very obvious thing, basically. So I hope you will forgive me for this long explanation. I thought it might actually be necessary in some cases. So here we are. But don't forget this particular formula. This is a very important formula. This is basically how differential of work at, at point x, y, z actually is calculated. That's the scalar product of uh, uh, vector uh, of the force times um, the differential of uh, position. Okay, so next program. Now, this is uh, the following theorem. Now, let's assume, now, by the way, this is basically for any kind of a field. With um, um, potential, without potential, doesn't really matter. As long as the field in intensity force exists, this is basically true because we are talking about the same trajectory. Now let's talk about different trajectories. So we are approaching the potential fields. Let's consider that. W 
WAB along path number 1 equals to W from A to B along path number 2. Then, this is again a very, very micro theorem or lemma. Now, then, um, if you will go from um, point one along A, B, plus along po uh, pass two from B to A, so which is from A to B along one, and from B to A along B, then that would be zero. So what I'm saying is that if you will travel around a closed uh, trajectory, then the total work which the force will perform will be equal to zero. And again, it's only if work between two different points is independent of the uh, trajectory. So if this is given, if the work is, if the work depends only on endpoints and does not depend on the trajectory, then moving along the closed path uh, would result in the zero uh, work. Well, why is it zero? Well, if you're moving, let's say it's a gravitational field, whenever you're moving, let's say, from, from here to here, you have to perform work against the <coughs> sorry against the force, but if you are moving from here to here back, then the force actually helps you. So if this is the work positive, then this is the work negative, right? So that that's what it is, and the closed trajectory results in zero work. Now, how can that be proven? Well, actually, it's very very simple. Since this is given, and this is equal to minus W2BA, according to whatever you, I, the, the, previous, the previous lemma, if you are moving in the opposite direction, the work is uh, changing the sign. So, uh, moving along path number 2 from A to B is negative relative to B to A, which means that uh, if you will add together W1AB and W2AB, that would be the same as the same as W first pass from A to B minus second pass from B to A. And since uh, uh, sorry, from A to B, minus A to B. Uh, so this is a closed circle, yes, A to B. But these are equal, so these cancel each other, because it's from A to B along the first pass, and A to B along the second pass, and they are supposed to be the same, because um, because we have actually presumed that this is the condition of our lemma and that's why it would be equal to zero. So, from here to here and then from here to here is the same thing as from here to here minus from here to here. And again, since, it's, uh, since work is independent on the path, that would be zero. Okay, it's a very simple theorem and I, will, I, I have introduced all these symbols just to make it a little bit more kind of obvious. Okay. So we have proven that if trajectory is independent on the path, then moving along closed trajectory would be equal to zero. Now, let's reverse again, lemma. So if... Um, so what I have proven, so that was my first lemma, the second was this, AB plus W2 from B to A is equal to zero. That's my second. 
uh, lemma. Now the third lemma is if um, if one a b plus two b a is equal to zero, then so this is my closed circle, closed loop. So now I'm doing reverse to a previous. If the work is equal to zero, if you're moving along a closed trajectory, then uh, work should be independent on the, on the path. So from A to B along first path, or from A to B along second path, should be exactly the same. So, again, A, B, two absolutely um, free, f freely chosen um, points in the field, and two freely chosen paths, number one and number two. And I would like to prove that the work from A to B along the first is equal to from A to B along the second path, if this is given. so. If along every closed trajectory is equal to zero. So from A to B and from B to A along the second pass would be equal to zero, right? But again, so I will replace 2BA to minus 2AB. So from B to A or from A to B should be different sign, which means W1AB minus 2. Oops minus 2 AB is equal to 0 from which follows that they are equal and that's what's necessary very simple things just plain manipulation with something which we have already just um, uh, proved in, in a previous uh, uh, theorem like this one for example okay so we have proven basically this following that this is equivalent that W1AB is equal to W2AB so these two are equivalent we have just have proven from from here to here that's the last one and from here to there that was a previous. Okay, and one more lemma, again, very, very simple. Now you have three points. This is A, B, and this is C. So, what I would like to prove is that the work performed from B to C is equal to work performed from A to C minus work performed um, B to C. Uh, no, A, A to B, sorry. A to B. So, moving from here to here, work is the same as difference between this and this. That's what I would like to prove. Now, this is very similar to vector algebra, if you remember. If you have this vector, it's equal to a difference between this vector and this vector, right? Okay, now, how can I prove it? Again, very, very simply. What's given? Given is that our field is um, of such a property that the work performed by field intensity doesn't really depend on the path. So that's basically we have proven. Uh, that, sorry, that, that's given. What we have proven is that uh, the uh, amount of work along any path, which is uh, starts and ends at the same point, the closed uh, trajectory, is equal to zero. So I know that all these three together, if I will use this direction from C to A, that would be zero. So WAB plus WBC plus WCA, not AC, CA, that's equal to zero, right? Okay, so 
from this I will do this I will change this sign to minus and instead of CA I will put AC from which follows this so WAC, WBC is equal to let's put WAC would be with a plus and WAB would be with a minus again very simple things so basically all these uh, uh, simple lemmas are preparation for my next lecture where I'm going to prove that um, basically the reverse to whatever I was proving in the previous lecture that if the field has this property that the work is independent on the trajectory or this property which is equivalent that the work along any closed trajectory is equal to zero then this is a, a sufficient condition for existence of the potential function and the field would be a gradient of the this potential function but that will be the next time so I would suggest you to read the uh, notes for this lecture now unizor.com is a website where you can find the video and the notes and the notes are like a textbook um, well the site is totally free so you go to unizor.com you choose um, classic physics plus and uh, this is part of the preparation for um, uh, Lagrangian and Hamiltonian, the preparation which basically is kind of summarizing whatever we know about the fields in Newtonian mechanics from the Newtonian uh, standpoint. So you choose the Newtonian um, uh, view and this is the lecture which is called Fieldwork Lemmas. Okay, thanks very much and good luck.